So I want to tell a story about um, the aspect of dreams that can be explored as one would explore working a koan, right? The famous uh, koan is what is the sound of one hand clapping? That sort of uh, investigation of a nonsensical or paradoxical uh, situation. What is the sound of one hand clapping? Uh, and these are worked seriously in uh, certain schools of Zen practice. Well, I'll tell a, a dream. I'll leave, there are some names in there that I'll, I'll leave out. But in the dream, uh, uh, I'll tell it in the words of the dreamer. I'm in kind of an open sort of foyer of a, a big parking garage. Uh, you know, the, where the elevators would be and that's it. It's open to two stories. And uh, I'm with a work colleague and I'm with a Zen teacher, but a Westerner. And we go up to the mezzanine level and there there is someone preaching Zen, a monk, he's Asian, uh, and with a sort of a Zen outfit, you would say. Uh, and um, he's preaching like a sort of a fundamentalist Christian would be preaching on a street corner in New York City, that sort of thing. And there's a small crowd there. And the Zen teacher I'm with, he stops to listen and he bows and he stays there. The colleague I'm with, he goes uh, to uh, the upper level I can't remember if the dreamer said that that work colleague bowed before going up or not. I move on alone now, and I'm moving towards the stairs to go to a lower level of the parking garage. Um, and I'm looking to get to a car for a journey. Uh, as I'm heading towards the stairs, uh, coming towards me, is another Zen monk dressed almost in a peasant garb, uh, that kind of uh, hat you see people wear when they're working the rice fields. This one is very different from the one who was preaching, like a born-again preacher. Uh, this one is beautiful, serene face, and yet everything about how this monk moves is athletic and cat-like. He's very sinewy in his muscularity. But that beautiful, serene face that could only come from lots of meditation. And as we come close, before he passes me by, I bow. And the monk, monk's face takes on this sort of enigmatic smile, a bit like the Mona Lisa smile. And I don't know, I again speaking in the voice of the dreamer, I don't know what to make of that, but I continue and head for uh, the stairs uh, to descend. This is the end of the, the dream images. Well, there are many things that we could pull apart in this dream. There is the ascending and descending, of course, this uh, very interesting topic in Chinese medicine. In fact, if you go to Google and put in my name and Heiner Fruhoff and ascending, descending, you'll get to an interesting interview that I did with him on this topic. Uh, and there's a lot uh, to be said. And so when this dream has ascending, right, the work colleague goes up, the dreamer goes down, uh, that already is interesting and could be explored more. But here, the, I'm telling this dream just to make the point about how certain things just resist being pulled apart satisfactorily. And what it was for this dreamer as the dreamer related it, there's something about this last interaction with the monk where the dreamer bows and there is this, I say the smile is like an enigma, but it's also mysterious. The dreamer wondered, is this monk 
smiling because I'm a Westerner bowing and I really don't know anything about what's going on and or why. Um, and so we worked the dream, but it ended up that this was a good instance of where the dreamer just had to hold on to that image of that monk, the second monk. And in a sense, there are three monks there, right? There's the Zen teacher who's uh, uh, in the beginning and who was left behind uh, with the encounter of the preaching monk, and then this third one. And um, so even threeness could be explored in the dream. But it was interesting what, uh, after a long time of sitting with this as a koan, koan uh, what the um, the dreamer came back with, and as far as I know, uh, continues to work with this, what they felt was that this uh, last monk was just this beautiful fusion of the yin and yang. The, the yin would be the serenity in the face. The yang would be this cat-like readiness to spring into martial art action. There was no clear sign at all from clothing or whatever that this actually was a martial artist, but this readiness of the yang chi to spring into action was evident. And what the dreamer felt like was that this was um, sort of the, the path that they were being told they had to follow. Not a completely yin path, not a completely yang path, but this beautiful fusion of yin and yang. And this came from working that last encounter with the, the, the monk uh, deeply as we would work a koan, which is to say just sitting with it. You can't tease it apart logically and get anywhere really with koan study. It's different. You have to let yourself be steeped in it, just like a tea bag is steeped in hot water. And eventually things start, on a level of meaning, start shaking loose. Um, and so I <clears throat> learned with this dream uh, to um, become more open to maybe not every image in a dream is designed, is well designed to be pulled molecular limb from molecular limb and say this goes to earth and this goes to metal and this goes to water and this is San Zhao and so on. Maybe some things we just try to grok it as a whole. Um, I'm assuming you're familiar with the word grok from stranger in a strange land. Um, apprehend it as a whole gestalt. And I found, since this was really the first dream uh, that I decided to take this koan approach with, and uh, since then, I wouldn't say it comes up uh, frequently, uh, but it's not uncommon either. And it's, it's uh, generally very fruitful uh, if the dreamer will actually work it like a koan. Sometimes dreamers just want a quick and ready uh, interpretation of their dream and that it's never as fruitful when it goes that way as when they they really work it. Um, in terms of resources on uh, koans, I, I think John Tarrant's book, uh, T-A-R-R-A-N-T, I think the title is something like Bring Me the Rhinoceros, which is a reference to uh, uh, a well-known koan. Uh, he's a brilliant writer, and he is also a brilliant uh, dream worker, as it turns out. He was, he's got a PhD in Jungian dream work, and, uh, but now he's full-time uh, Zen Roshi with the Pacific Zen Institute. Somewhere in the North Bay, maybe Santa Rosa era, some area, somewhere around there. And uh, so his book on koans, I thought, was particularly well done. and. Uh, I, I really support his work. So here I'm introducing the idea that maybe when you're stumped somewhere in a dream, uh, 
that the point is not to unravel it bit by bit, but just let it hit you, like you would just let a whole ocean wave wash over you. And the wave is not to be understood, it's just to be experienced. And uh, so try that approach if it seems appropriate with given uh, aspects of a dream. Thanks so much for listening.